Gerard here from the 3T crew. This is our G1 Climax Block A Night 5 review. But before that, as always, I gotta put you on to some stuff. Check us out on Through the Table and at iStrongStyle on Instagram. Check us out on Twitter at 3T Pod. We're on TikTok now at iStrongStyle. You know, if you want to listen to the 3T Podcast, check us out on Apple, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, Podbean, and iHeartRadio. If you want to buy a t-shirt to support the 3T crew, check us out at ProWrestlingTees.com. We got two shirts on there, and we got more of the fire designs on the way. Now let's jump into the G1 review. It started off with our young lion, Path to Dominance. Yes, we're using that name for this. New Japan, if you want it, you can take it for free. Just put me on it after the fact. Yota Tajuji, Gabriel Kidd. Yota Tajuji finally takes an L here. His first loss in the tournament. Now he sits at 3 and 1. Gabriel Kidd representing the LA Dojo Boys. Now is at 2 and 1. Does he continue on the path to dominance? Does Yoha come back from being on Donut? Does Yota rebound? It's going to be interesting. This match was a pretty good opening. It was actually better than the, the, the first match of the G1 tournament that I'm about to review right about now. Now, the next match in the, on the show was Taichi vs. Yujiro Takahashi. As I mentioned, I thought the Young Lions match was better than this. And it's not Taichi's fault. I'm not the biggest Taichi fan. He's kind of meh to me, but he's a really good heel, and that's probably why I don't like him. But Takahashi is horrible. Um, I think the only reason why he's in the tournament is because they probably could have fly more people in, out. I have to say, it wasn't really impressive. They did a lot of heel and heel antics here the biting of the finger and the dumb in the eye. Um, tai Chi won with a low blow and then a pin variation. Skip this match if you're re if you're if you're just trying to watch the best matches of the tournament. Please skip this one. Don't waste your time. Um, tai Chi now is at three and zero at six points. Yujiro Takahashi sitting at donut. He might donut the whole tournament. Just might. Now the second match was an improvement. It was okay. It was um Jeff Cobb versus the King Minoru Suzuki. Like I said, very decent match. This is more of a if you're seeing different levels of Suzuki in this tournament so far. You know, the Ishii match was more striking, stiff, strong style. And then you had the more brawling stuff he did with Tai Chi. This one was more of a mat wrestling, you know, I'm going to grind you out because you're bigger than me. You know, which was funny because Jeff Cobb's an Olympian. And he got out-wrestled by Minoru Suzuki. Minoru Suzuki is an accomplished amateur wrestler himself, but he's not an Olympian. So it was pretty interesting match-wise. Like, that, I don't, know if, I don't know if it played off too well. Um, Jeff Cobb is okay. You know, I, I, he's missing something for me. Maybe maybe you put him in Suzuki Goon after this tournament. Maybe that's something that, you know, makes me more invested in his character. Because right now he doesn't have one. Remember, Suzuki was phenomenal, as always. Suzuki wins. Now Suzuki is back on board here. He's at four points. Jeff Cobb is still sitting at two points. Right? So now you're starting to see the hierarchy of the tournament going forward. Progressing, right? Now we're now they do the whole cleaning thing where they promote their ads. You know, when they're putting on all their t shirt ads and all that bullshit. Now we're jumping into the what everyone's really here for the meat. You know, if you eat the meat and potatoes, the potatoes happen early. Now we're having the meat portion of, of this episode. It started off of their three. My, my opinion, I thought this was a triple main event. Well, this was the match of the night. Kota Ibushi, my personal favorite, versus the G1 MVP, always, Tomohiro Ishii. Mm. A violent match, very physical throughout. Um, Ishii always brings that side out of Kota much earlier than everyone else does in a match. There's a pretty cool slap sequence blah, 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 that went on that led to Ibushi hitting him in the throat. Um... There was a, a lot. There was some, you know, a lot of no selling on German suplexes and snap suplexes and hurricane ranas, as expected with these two. These two always go at it like two bulls. There's a boom, boom, boom throughout the entire match. Kota Ibushi wins. He's at four points now. He's back on back in the win column after losing to Jay White. Tomo Ishii is still sitting on Donut. Let's hope that changes because we all love ourselves some Ishii. Definitely check this match out. I thought this was the best match of the night. Yes, my opinion, better best match of the night. Um, interesting part about this match is post match Ishii and him were still kind of still wanted to go at it. You know, Ishii still has some pizzazz after that Kamagoye. So I love I love those little intricacies of Ishii's character. I think he's kind of kind of not kind of he really is super underrated. 
Now, the official, their official co-main event, you know, they didn't call it a triple main event, which it should have been called, because there's three phenomenal matches. It was the dragon, Shingo Takagi, versus the aerial assassin himself, Will Ospreay. Well, as I mentioned in my our preview special, I have Shingo as one of my block finalists for block A. So, him starting off 0-2 had a, me a little, a little sweating, you know, a little, a little sweating here. Uh, Osprey started off at 2-0 so far. Hot start for Osprey coming back from his COVID vacation, so to speak. Um, this was not better than their Best of Super Juniors final from last year, I believe. This was still a very good match, do not get me wrong. I thought this was the second best match of the night. It was not as good as their Best of Super Juniors final. I'm going to reiterate that point. Still very, it was a great match. I enjoyed the hell out of it. The last five minutes or so was this action-packed. You know, Shingo once again landing all the big signature spots, the pump and bomber, you know, made in Japan and Ushigami and all these other stuff. They had a cool one where he did the last of the dragon off the top rope, which was pretty interesting. Um, Osprey did a lot of his Osprey stuff. Um, the striking in this match was unparalleled, except on any other night that doesn't include Ishii and Ibushi having a one on one, the striking was unparalleled. Osprey looked phenomenal. He has zero ring rust whatsoever, which is absolutely insane. It just shows you the caliber of athlete Will Ospreay is. But Mr. Consistency, the dragon, Shingo Takagi, gets this win. He's back on the board. His first G1 win of this year. He's now sitting at two points at one and two. Will Ospreay is still at two and one. He's sitting at four points. So let's hope the dragon picks up some wins. Osprey still has some big matches going forward with o the looming Okada and Ibushi matches for both men, actually. T Takagi hasn't wrestled them either. There's some big, 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 big matches for those, both those guys who are still only in their second G1s ever. Now in our main event, this is the rematch of the MSG show. You know, this is, this is a rematch of a Wrestle Kingdom. This is one of the, the longest standing rivalries in New Japan. Jay White, the Switchblade... Versus the Rainmaker himself, Kazuchika Okada. I I like this match. Um, that's about it for this match. I liked it, and it's crazy because this is something off with Okada's game right now. I don't I don't know. Maybe it's an injury, or they're trying to downplay Okada a bit because he's been so prevalent the last three and a half years on New Japan Television and pay per view and everywhere. Um. He just didn't look himself, and I, I, I hope it's just something that's purposely being done. I hope it's not an injury or something like he's falling off a cliff. Uh, I'm not going to max Kellerman in it and say it like that. He ain't falling off a cliff. I believe we're going to see the Rainmaker probably at the end of the tournament when it's too late to step up. He's going to step up. Um, Jay White, once again, is dominating the block right now. Him and Taichi are the only ones sitting at 3-0. Okada is doing pretty well for himself, too. He's at 1-2. He's, at he's still in it. But I, like I've been mentioning every A block episode, Okada is not winning this tournament. It's not happening. Jay White wins. He's sitting at three and zero. Pretty decent match. Not as good as the MSG match. But what can you do, right? You know, you're never gonna you're not gonna hit a home run every time. Let's hope for better Okada matches going forward. And let's hope Jay White continues to dominate because he's my pick to win the whole tournament. That's it from Gerard from the three two coup signing off. Until the B block match in two days. See you then.